good to work for a company that is driven. It's good to work for a company that has plans. It's good to work for a company that's attached to a forest and a forest ownership. I think the confidence that you get from the board and the lead team that we're here to do a good job. They are an awesome bunch to work for at all levels, from the floor level on the sawmill with guys who are right down at the cutting edge, literally, right up to senior management and the board. To have a group of people working towards having a successful business, I get a lot of satisfaction. Never the words that we can't or we won't, it, it's always it's always such a positive outlook with everything. We've got good relationships with our customers and we've got a dedicated team that that's, understands the complete supply chain and the importance of, of supplying the right product at the right time to our customers. We're a proud Australian manufacturer. Uh, we have over 400 people working for us and our people are very experienced, have years of knowledge and it's up to us to make sure that we can deliver what our customers need. Timberlink is an Australian processor of softwood sawmill products with two sawmills, one in Tasmania and one in South Australia, selling products into the Australian and export markets. Something that makes Timberlink a little different from all the other competitors in the market is that we backward integrate right back to the forest. So from a forest to a processor to a customer, we can have one seamless supply chain. So we have long-term security of our forest resource being part of a forestry group. This structure enables us to invest so that we can make sure that we stay competitive, uh, that we can offer our customers quality products on a sustainable basis, and, and it means that we're here for the long term so they can rely upon us. It's important for our customers that we provide them the level of service that they need so that they can rely on us as a business to give them the product when they want it, at the right quality, at the right time, and at the right price. These are really important things for us to make sure that we can provide to our customers. We have a distribution network around Australia that can provide a high level of service. We have a sales team based around the country that enables us to call on our customers, understand their needs and make sure that we're fulfilling them. And we're also investing in our business to make sure that we're continuing to innovate and to have the kind of products that they want. We're a proud Australian manufacturer. Uh, we have over 400 people working for us and most of those people are in regional communities around Australia. So we play a very large part in the success of those communities. We contribute to them in a substantial way. And as an Australian manufacturer, we're proud that we can play that role uh, within Australia and, and that we can be the kind of company that we think our customers will want to support. As an Australian manufacturer, we're highly committed to safety throughout all levels of activity within our business. We provide the skills, the tools, the training and the resources necessary to keep our people safe. Whether it's in our sawmills, our distribution assets or with our salespeople out in the field or our administration staff, safety is important for all our people. It's important also that we have a continuous improvement path for our safety where all the time we're looking for ways that we can adopt higher safety standards for our people and keep them safe. It's our number one business priority. Seeds are grown in seed orchards. They're genetically bred. Uh, it's not genetic engineering, it's natural tree breeding to breed the biggest and fattest trees, the straightest trees, and also strong wood properties, which are important for the timber processing industry. The uh, seeds for the nursery would be sown around September, and then uh, they'd be raised in the nursery through to June or July, and then uh, they're weeded and tended by hand and fertilised, and then also hand uh, raised and, and put into boxes, and then the planters uh, plant the boxes out in the field. After the final harvest, there's a lot of branches and, and needles or leaves of the trees are left and they're mulched back into the soil to conserve the nutrients. Once the trees are, are planted, they're, they're tended or nurtured throughout their, their life and they'll be monitored for their nutrient status. So foliage samples will be taken and analysed for the nutrient content and any, any corrective fertiliser added. Leading up to around age 10 is when they first thin. So thinning is when you take out the weaker stems, the smaller stems or the, the bent stems and the trees are quite small there so they're usually cut into pulp log which is uh, chipped. The idea of thinning is to concentrate growth on the best trees for the final crop. After that at around 20, between uh, 
20 and 25 years, the forest may be thinned uh, one or two additional times and they're cut into logs for sawing. Now the process of harvesting is quite automated these days and they're quite sophisticated million dollar plus machines with onboard computers and sensors that optimise and, and assist the harvest operator make decisions about what length they're going to cut. Once the harvester has felled the tree and cut it into logs, you have another machine called a forwarder that's a, a six-wheel drive articulated all-terrain vehicle that picks up the logs and takes them out to the side of the road where they're loaded onto, onto trucks that then take the, the logs into the sawmills. In the log yard, logs are brought in on log trucks. We unload them and segregate them according to where they came from or log sizes. We then remove the bark from the logs. Uh, they come in from the bush with the bark still on them. That bark goes off for landscaping use. Um, and the log is then ready to be sawn. We set our line up by patterns, but we look at the patterns that will give us the best turnover on sales. So up in the log yard, right from the very start, we've got logs ready to, to run based on what the market requirements um, are at that stage. Timberlink has a, has a, uh, a, a log purchasing uh, section, resource managers whose role is to purchase the logs on behalf of the sawmills. And while most of our logs come from other New Forest owned uh, plantations, we also purchase logs from other growers as well. So each week Timberlink puts in a log order to our various suppliers and we'll specify how much we want each week, we'll specify the lengths that we want. All the logs are weighed uh, as they come into the mill and before they go into the sawmill that we also debark and scan them and in the scanning process we measure all the attributes of the logs, its diameter, its length, the shape of the log, the three-dimensional uh, shape, what what, how we're going to cut that log and that's all stored in the computer which is then programmed into cut runs where we match the product from the, all the natural variation within the logs to the market demand for, for sales in the next uh, month. We have monthly, uh, we call it a sales and operational review, so uh, we get the feedback from what's happening based on customer forecasts, the customers feed their forecasts back to our sales guys, so we take their requirements and uh, our job is to, uh, to basically convert that into how we should set up our patterns for the two million odd saw logs that are coming in, all with varying characteristics because it's a natural resource, uh, to meet a, a, a customer or a range of customer requirements uh, on that product. Timberlink has distribution centres in most states of Australia and we sell into every state of Australia. So we have a wide coverage right across the market. Our primary markets are in the southern parts, closer to our sawmills, but we do have a capability to supply into other parts of the country. And we also export into Asia as well. There's two types of business we operate. One mill direct to the customer, which is uh, more for the bulk loads or direct semi-trailer loads. The warehouse operations look after the smaller, just-in-time business. So if a customer needs something urgently, instead of putting it through the mill, we'll run that direct out of the warehouse. Our Knoxfield warehouse carries about 3,500 cube worth of timber. To give you an idea there, there's 40 cube of timber to every semi-load. Health and safety, and you'll hear time and time again the cliche is number one in our business, but that is very true here. We like to store approximately 12,000 cubic metres of log stocks down at the log yard. We like to have a minimal amount of, of green rack stock, which is between the green mill and the kilns process. And we like a good volume, approximately 10 to 12,000 cubic metres of finished dry racks to present the dry mill with, with good product flows and, and extended run periods which allow us to, to bring it up to a good efficiency rate and run at that rate for approximately a week gives us good results through the dry mill. Finished product obviously we'd like none. Um, we tend to hold between 8 to 14,000 cubic metres of finished product on site. That helps alleviate stocking issues at the mill but also gives the customer a wide range of product that they can call on urgently if they require. A lot of it's through sales history, so we know what to carry and what we need to carry. We probably 
Let's move out of here anywhere between 160 cubic metres to 250. We can move, you know, five, six semis out of here a day. So the type of customer we supply is your local timber merchant through to your large truss and frame manufacturer. Uh, we lay these warehouses out by area, by row. So when the timber packs come in, we know exactly where they can go. When the orders need to be picked, it actually comes up with the location on the picking slip. So what we get there is uh, a great efficiency from the picking slip for the forklift driver. He knows exactly where to drive to, grab the pack, straight back out to the loading area. Green mill's the part of the mill where we actually cut the log up with saws and chippers from a log into sawn rectangular boards. There's good parts of the log and there's lesser value parts of the log. So as it comes in in, uh, in its natural state, our role is actually to identify the higher value components of the saw log, then set up our mills to uh, optimise that saw log through the manufacturing operations on, on both sides. What we do is we laser scan each log. That geometric profile is then run through some sophisticated software that allows us to best evaluate what we can cut out of every log to recover the best value in, in timber. Having done all the optimisation to determine what we should cut out of the log, we now actually have to cut it, and that requires some complex sawing machinery. For instance, our saws cut around the curve of the log, they don't just cut in a straight line. Control centre is, is the head rig within the green mill process. The head rig operator is there to control the entirety of the line, um, which is the soaring, the soaring accuracy, continuous flow, efficiencies, and he controls the majority of the waste and the waste system. We run with our, our SAFE program, which is Stop, Assess, Fix, Evaluate. Our aim is to have zero LTI injuries and to minimise the risk to every employee is ultimately our, our goal. Saw doctoring is a very specific trade that uh, basically means that you can turn a piece of steel into a sophisticated implement with which to cut up timber at very high speed. The saw shop runs a series of between two and four saws through the head rig process. Um, these saws are changed every shift, so every eight hours. They are resharpened. They have different saws for different log diameters. So the saw diameters change, teeth per saw change, depending on the diameter of log of which we're cutting. In the saw shop area, there's a, a saw doctor. He's, his job is to, to A, sharpen the saws, and then to lay the saws on the saw bench. The purpose of the saw bench is to peen or de-stress the saw. So the metal is of a brittleness, if you like, that that saw stands upright and doesn't go soft, so he's really loading up the saw metal and peening it to get it straight, round and to de-stress the, the steel. Once we've cut all of the boards, we then have to separate them into grades for drying. Uh, very high moisture content or very wet boards take longer to dry, so we separate them from the dry boards. They're then formed into timber racks and put into kilns for drying. The kilns use air circulation and heat. The heat comes from combustion of waste sawdust, which would otherwise just go to landfill. The burning of that wood waste is providing us with about 90% of on-site energy usage. It's fully green energy. The drying process takes about 16 hours to take a board from freshly sawn to ready to turn into a finished product. If we left it to open air drying, it would be there for the best part of the year. To begin with, it comes in at, at 70 to 90% moisture content. The aim of the kilns is to dry it down to exactly between 12 to 15% end moisture. The kilns run 24-7, 363 days a year. We continually dry, there's a change over time of maybe 20 minutes through each kiln and each heat plant is serviced annually. So we bring each heat plant down once a year. The idea of the upstairs screens in the, in the kilns operator's cabin is to simply monitor air flows to both heat plants, temperatures to the kilns, oil flows, pressures, and ultimately 
a heap of screens where they choose, if you like, a recipe to run that cross section of product through the kilns as quickly as possible to get the best drying outcome. Through our dry mill process here at the Tarpina site, the kiln racks, um, they rest for a period of 24 hours approximately. Then that product is ready for, for moulding. After we've kiln dried the wood, it's ready to turn into a finished product. So we load the racks up and separate the boards out one by one and we mould them to a finished size. It comes in slightly oversized so our, um, our moulder here can, can basically rip the product down smooth to an exact size and tolerance for the customer. We have moulder operators, their job is to continuously feed the product end to end with no gap. After the timber's machined to size, every piece is then checked for moisture content and then we grade it through a mechanical grading machine, do final visual checks to make sure that the, the visual attributes like knot sizes are within the specification and then we do another piece of optimisation to make sure that we're getting the absolute best value out of every one of those pieces of timber. What we're looking for is to make sure that the defects such as knots and knot holes are within acceptable limits for that product. From there we have the ability to, to spray the termite treatment, the T2. There is 37 bins and, and a 38th bin which is our, our rework bin or our, our waste bin. They present to the stacker. The stack puts them into a format for sales. We strap, wrap, place bearers to keep the product off the ground, apply plastic and that product's pretty much ready for dispatch after that. We sell our products right around the country and mainly they're used for housing construction and for outdoor product use, so maybe pergolas or decking, those sort of applications. We also sell our products overseas. We sell wood chip into Japan, uh, which is used in manufacturing paper products, and we sell finished product, timber products, which go into packaging and pellet and, uh, and accessory industries in countries mainly around the Asian region. Timber's been measured against other building materials and specified structural components that are used in building the average family home to determine the greenhouse gas emissions that are produced during the manufacturing process of each material. So overall, timber results in the least energy to manufacture compared to other materials. And in particular, when you're looking at wall frames for the average family home, timber uses much less or produces much less greenhouse gas emissions. Steel produces four times as much and brick eight times as much. The forest industry is the only carbon positive sector of the Australian economy. We produce a couple of different ranges of products. So Timberlink White is our structural timber. It's available in the common structural grades of MGP12, MGP10. They're structural grades for construction of domestic dwellings, roof trusses, wall frames, that kind of thing. Timberlink Blue is a framing product. It's treated with a termite repellent. It's also effective against European house borer for Western Australia. Timberlink Green is a, an outdoor structural range, so again that's structural graded wood, but it's treated for outdoor use. We use an LOSP treatment, which means that it's stable, it doesn't need re-drying after use, um, it can be bought from the shop and put up into a pergola or deck framing that's durable against fungal attack and insects attack and can be used outside. We produce a range of landscaping products. They're fit for purpose, good value products, suitable for garden edging and those sorts of applications. In our outdoor treated range, we have three groups of products. H3 products are suitable for use above ground, so things like uh, handrails and decking and that sort of thing. We have landscaping materials that are suited for uh, garden edging and those types of applications. And we produce uh, high hazard level um, posts couple of other products which are treated to an H4 rating. H4 means it can be used outside in ground. We also produce a range of packaging products. They're produced from parts of the log that aren't suitable for high value uses like um, treated products or structural products. One of the important byproducts from our process is wood chip. It's actually a very demanding product in terms of chip quality and it's uh, shipped to Japanese customers for making paper. Final product quality control is a critical part of our process, particularly for structural products. Obviously that's very important because they're holding buildings up. As part of that process, we take out of production 
uh, at least one board per thousand and we physically test that, that piece of timber to make sure that it's within limits. Part of our commitment to customers is that we'll help them to understand our products to the best of our ability. So we can train them in areas like treatment process and products, the different types of structural products that we offer and the certifications. Timberlink's wood chip is, is what we call residual wood chip. It's produced as a byproduct of sawmilling. It's, it's, it's the uh, offcuts from the timber, from our timber products. It's highly sought after because the residual chip has a uh, much higher pulp yield and density compared to young pulp logs. But the Japanese industry uh, likes our wood chip. It's, it's highly sought after and it's used in the manufacturing of a variety of paper and, and uh, cardboard products. What's happening behind us at the moment is we're loading a vessel. We have bulldozers that push the, the chip towards uh, the conveyors, the reclaim, and front end loaders that, um, that put the, pick up the wood chip from the pile and dump it in the reclaim. It's then conveyed to the ship loader and the ship loader uh, loads the vessel presents the, the wood chip into each hatch. We use a thing called a slinger, which the wood chip frays out around the hatch, and there's a deck man on the, on the vessel that operates that slinger and uh, controls how the wood chip's presented into the hatch. There's a deflector plate that the wood chip hits and sprays up into the air, and it flutters down like, like snowflakes and packs in well, and that's the art of, of loading a, a vessel. It's very important that we uh, manage our sawmills with good hygiene and we ensure there's no contaminants in our wood chip. Any plastics, metal, uh, any foreign objects, stones, anything of that nature is not acceptable in our wood chip. When our wood chip's delivered each truckload, we take samples out of each truckload to check for sizing to make sure our size mix is correct for the paper and pulp manufacturing process. And when we load a vessel every 200 tonnes, we take a sample, and given a vessel's 55,000 tonnes, that's a lot of samples per vessel. Each one is weighed. Each one uh, we split into two samples. One half is, is put in the oven to test for its moisture content. The other half is uh, put into a, a sizing machine to check the, the different sizes of the, each individual piece of wood chip. And sizing is very important for the pulp manufacturing process. Ideally our wood chip should only be about 8 or 9 millimetres thick and about 20 to 25 millimetres long. The smaller the wood chip, uh, the less fibre uh, or cellulose will be in the chip and the cellulose fibres will be broken and will be shorter. We produce over 300,000 green tonnes a year and, and that figure is going to rise as our sawmills increase in their capacity over time. Given our customers purchase wood chip from a range of suppliers all around the world, it's important for them to sell their paper products as environmentally and uh, sustainable and community sustainable as well. So our log suppliers plantations are certified either under the Forest Stewardship Council or the Australian Forestry Standard Certification Schemes and we pass that certification on to our wood chip and to our customers. Part of sustainability is to minimise wastage and maximise processing efficiency and the path to that is through optimisation. Sustainability is a triple bottom line concept. Obviously the business has to make money or it's not sustainable. It has to function well within its communities. Um, we're a large regional employer and it has to be environmentally sustainable. As forests evolve over a 30 year period, trees capture carbon from the atmosphere. It's estimated that about 10.5 billion tonnes of carbon, which was previously soil carbon, is contained in Australian forests. As the harvesting process takes place and the logs from the harvest are transferred into sawmills, carbon remains stored so that each timber product manufactured becomes a lifelong carbon storage bank. In Australia, wood products store an estimated 230 million tonnes of carbon. This helps to mitigate climate change, obviously. We aim to have zero waste as every part of each log is used. Timber products and landfill represent a long-term store of carbon, which is around an estimated 70,000 tonnes per year in Australia. To demonstrate environmental sustainability, uh, virtually all of the logs that we cut are certified to one or both of the two international standards for forest management. 
and we carry formal chain of custody certification to be able to demonstrate to our customers and other stakeholders that all of the logs that we process are sourced from sustainably managed forests. There's two globally recognised forest certification schemes operational, one's called PEFC and the other one is FSC. The vast majority of the wood that we cut is certified to both of those standards. At the moment we've got a major project happening at our Tarpeda sawmill where we're investing over $20 million in upgrading largely the dry mill area of our business. We're going to double the speed of our planer. So our current planer does 300 metres a minute and the new planer will do 600 metres a minute. So we're also embarking on a brand new scanning system that will actually be able to identify every defect in a board. So those defects will automatically be graded and our graders now become operators and or optimisation people. So we're actually upskilling our site at the same time. Already we've spent money at our Bell Bay Mill, upgrading some of the manufacturing processes there and installing some new equipment, and that will continue. Uh, this business is about investing for the future, ensuring we remain competitive, and giving our customers the products at the quality and at the service levels that they want. Timberlink is committed to having a great business, not just for us, but for our customers, for our people, for our communities. We think we can really make a difference as an Australian manufacturer and we're very proud of that position and we're committed to ensuring that we continue to improve and meet the needs of all of our stakeholders and shareholders in our business.